In this video, we will be showing you how to navigate and use the new Numeracy Act page in both the admin and teacher portals. I must first start out by saying that this video is to be used for training purposes only, that no real students or data are displayed in this video, as it is from a sandbox server full of fake information, so any likeness to any real student is purely coincidental. So first thing we're going to show is how to access this page in the administrative portal. So you would first need to navigate to a student record. I'm just going to grab all second graders here and go into the first record. Once you're in the student record, the Numeracy Act page is located in the academic records under the Legislative Acts page. So where we're familiar with the Literacy Act, the Numeracy Act sits right alongside of there on its own tab. So when you navigate to the Numeracy Act tab, you will notice the different sections that we have for reporting requirements within the ANA Act. We have the Dyscalculia, the Retention, Summer Math Camp, Deficiency on Mathematics Benchmark Assessment, Incoming K-2 with Early Numeracy Deficiency, which is a third grade option, and incoming fourth and fifth grade with fractional reasoning deficiency. Now, the requirements for each of these will be rolled out over a series of years. So not all of this is going to be required for this year. We have the webinar that will be recorded that will show all of those requirements. So stay tuned from OMI as far as what will need to be submitted when on your students. But I want to show you how to navigate this page. Notice each one of these sections has an add button. So for any of these sections that are appropriate to add to a student, you would merely click the add button, which will pop up the screen to enter the information for that particular part of this page. So if I had a student who had been identified as having dyscalculia, I would click the add button, choose the school year, uh, mark that they had been identified and choose the screen or implementation and put what grade level. If I had a retention, if this student was going to be retained this year because of a math deficiency. Again, it's these where we have our drop downs where we select what school year it is. So with the school years inside of PowerSchool, when you think of, for example, this year being the 23-24 school year, you choose that back end year number. So for all entries you are making for this year, you would select 2024. The grade level, this student is a second grader and they are being retained in second grade and they are being retained because of a math deficiency. So we would check that box and hit submit. So for each one of these where we are marking that a student has been identified for any of the items listed here, as far as the ANA Act reporting, we would simply press that add button and choose that. For a deficiency on mathematics benchmark assessment, if this student has been identified as having that deficiency, I would again merely click the add button. I would choose for what school year I'm identifying this with. So again, if it's the 23-24 school year, I would mark 2024 on here. The administration, which one of the tests, was it the beginning of the year, the middle of the year, the end of the year, or the summer administration of our assessment? So if this was identified in the end of year, beginning of year, you would mark the appropriate one, and then which benchmark assessment was administered. So I'm going to say it was the Amplify assessment. And again, if you have any questions on what is appropriate to go in each one of these boxes, you will need to reach out to your OMI state person so that they can, or regional person, so that they can assist you with those and hit submit. Now, this page can also be accessed from within the teacher portal. So districts can make the decision of, are they going to be entering this data from the administrative side, or are they going to be entering it from the teacher side? So if I were to go over here, I've got a little incognito window typed in. And here I am at the teacher portal. So logged in as this teacher, if we have decided as a district, we're going to have the teachers entering in on their students within their class, then they would need to navigate inside of the teacher portal. They would need to go to the blue student information card on their course, and it would depend on which one of these course rosters. Now, in this case, I'm actually in an elementary school where all these courses are self-contained for a first grade class. Um, it could be other different ways in there. You could have rotations, and you would just need to say who's going to be in charge of what students as far as entering this information in. So I'm going to actually click into the blue icon here, and it gives me all of my students in my class. So if I click on a student, 
and I want to up here look at my select screens I notice one of the screens that I have access to as a teacher is a legislative acts page very familiar with teachers in K3 who are already entering any of this information in for the literacy act they now have the completed numeracy act tab where they will again be able to add this information just as we did over in the admin portal just a few minutes ago so if there were any of this information that pertained to this student um, if this student uh, was going to be going to summer camp, I would simply click add for what school year is this. So again, the 23-24 year means I picked 2024. What grade level invited? Did they attend? How many hours? I'm just putting some numbers in here. You would put what's appropriate and hit submit. So the navigation and the entry is very similar to the Literacy Act page. This information can be entered student by student. There is a way to do a mass upload as well, and we have documentation on how to do that through a data through the data import manager inside of PowerSchool. But if you have any questions about what information goes in here, reach out to your OMI representatives. If you have any questions on how to actually work with this inside of PowerSchool, feel free to reach out to myself or any of our PowerSchool coaches.